This demonstration will show you how to use the Create List Item Wizard within a K2 workflow. The Create List Item Wizard is helpful in any business process that requires creating a list item in a SharePoint list. For instance, an engineering department may want to provide a way to request the latest technical specification documents for a sales team and log information about those requests to a list within their SharePoint site. Let's take a look at a process like this that utilizes the Create List Item Workflow step. An engineering department provides release technical specification documents through a document library on their site. A sales department also has a custom list on their own site with items that correspond to document categories as they are grouped in engineering's technical specs library. Sales will use this list with a workflow to request the latest copies of specification documents from engineering. And at the same time, engineering wants to log information about these document requests from sales in a custom list, such as who made the request, when the documents requested will expire, and the group of documents they requested. For the sake of time, I've pre-configured a workflow to be started manually from this list on the sales site called Currently Released Technical Specs. The only step we need to add to this workflow will be the Create List Item step which will create a list item in the engineering list called Technical Spec Doc Request Log. To get that on the design canvas, you could select it from the List Items group in the ribbon menu at the top of the page under the Workflow Steps tab. Upon dropping the Workflow Step in the empty slot on my canvas, the first window opens and asks us to browse to the list where we want to create a new list item. I know the list we want to use to write this logging information lives under Engineering Subsite in the Denalix Portal Site Collection, so I'll select the Engineering Subsite from the selection list. And then from here, I want the custom list called Technical Spec Doc Request Log, which is where these list items will be created. Keep in mind, you can also use the folder option at the bottom of the window if you want the list item to be created in a specific folder within the list. You can enter text here or use fields from the context browser to dynamically name the new folder. I'm not going to use it in this example, but remember to enable folder creation in your list if you want to use it. Moving on to the next window. This window will allow you to specify the values that you want to populate in the new list item. You can again enter text and use fields from the context browser as your requirements dictate. For title, I'm going to drag the title column in from the item reference group based on the item that the user selected to run the workflow from. For requested by, I'll drop in the workflow context group's originator's name field so we know who is making the request specifically. I also have a predefined inline function that sets the expires date out 30 days from the day of the request. This way users will know the documents are only valid for that period of time. The last item to look at near the bottom of this window is called Create Item Reference. Using this setting allows you to reference this list item and its values and steps later on in the workflow, like a send email step or in one of the other list item workflow steps. You can give it a meaningful name as you see fit. I'm not going to use it in this workflow, so I'll uncheck it for now. That's all there is to the Create List Item step, and I've already configured the other steps in this workflow so I'm going to save this window and deploy the workflow. When this completes, I'll take you over to the SharePoint portal pages to demonstrate how it works. Take a look here and see that Engineering currently has various documents released and grouped by category in their library. So as Bob, I'm going to go to the Sales portal and open up the list Currently Released Technical Specs to request some of these documents. Then I'll open the Item Context menu up for the Security category and select K2 Workflows. And from the K2 Workflows page, I'll select the Request Technical Spec Docs Workflow against the Security category and run it. This may take a few seconds due to the copying of files from one library to another. So once it completes, we'll jump over to the Requested Technical Spec Docs Library on the Sales site which is where these requested documents are copied when the workflow completes. Great, so here you can see a folder was created with Bob's name on it and it contains the files requested for security. Now let's go over to the engineering site and open up the logging list, which is what we're really interested in. 
You can see the entry was made for this request and is tied to Bob's name with the information that we specified in the Create List wizard. Make note that the Created By column is set to the account SharePoint App. Know that you do have the ability to change the credentials for any event that runs in the workflow by right-clicking on the event and selecting Configure Credentials and then setting them to the account that you want to run the event under. When doing this, that account will appear in the Created By and Modified By columns. Thank you for watching this demo on how to use the Create List Item Wizard. We hope you have a better understanding of how and when you can use this workflow step within processes used by your organization.